to spend a little time talking about cache memory. Um, the whole purpose of cache memory is to be able to speed up the processing of data by taking data out of RAM and putting it into the cache memory, which is there in the or close to the processor, and so then things going in and out of the registers will be accessed much quicker. Um, it isn't very large, usually cache in relation to how large RAM is, but because it's so fast, it's definitely worth using. Um, normally, the way cache is set up, it's not accessed by address like memory is, um, so we don't like have hexadecimal addresses for it. What we have is that there will be blocks identified and you end up mapping data that comes from a memory block and putting it into a cache block and so then it, there's this sort of a like an algorithm that helps you define which memory block goes into which cache block and so on. So let me just show you what it looks like. Okay so for example, let's say this is our memory and we have these blocks and they're based on the word size and so on. Those are set up um, so that they function well with the, the um, capability of the machine you're using and of the processor. So if we take our memory and each of these has an address, these are our memory addresses, and we take that as a block of data, for example here block 0 will block match up with block 0 in our cache memory and 1 goes to 1, and 2 goes to 2, and 3 maps to 3, and then we repeat. So then if we need to get things from block 4 in main memory, that would then be placed in block 0. Now that means that what was in block 0 here in cache memory until then would have to be evicted and sent back to main memory in essence, or released from cache at least, so that block 4 could come in. So you have a lot of this swapping going in and out of the cache, values coming from memory going into the cache, and then when they're not needed or when something else seems to be a higher priority in terms of the need, that replaces whatever was in this cache block. Um, there's an example here of more blocks, right, which is more likely, and it would go on far from this also. But the same idea that every four blocks matches to every four blocks of our cache, and then so when the when the duplicates or, or when the hmm, when the factors of those block zero, so we go to block zero, block four, block eight, block twelve, all of those would map to cache block zero, whereas block one, block five, block nine, and block thirteen would all map to cache block one, and so on. So it's very organized in how we set up this blocking and the mapping from main memory to cache. Now, we do have to keep track of what is in the memory, and so we do need to keep track of the data about where the information is coming from. If we wanted to um, sort of access, I guess if we're wanting to access item in memory and bring it into the cache, we take the address in memory and divide it up into three different parts. The tag, which is kind of can be used for a bunch of different things. It depends on what you want, how you want to use it, and we'll see some examples of that. And then the block is which block of cache the, that block from the memory is going into. And then offset tells sort of like which level within that block the specific data item is. So for example, here, um, let's say here we have a system. Let's say we've set up our system so that when we're trying to address cache, we have one bit for the tag, one bit for the block, and two bits for the offset. Okay, so if we say that we're putting something in block zero with a tag of zero and an offset of one one, which is three, what notice what we're doing here is we're taking block zero here in memory and putting it into block zero, which is this tag here is being used to indicate the block of cache. And so we're just moving it all over. Now notice all four parts of that move over and it's just that we're wanting to actually look at the values in the um, the memory address here that has the three in it and that would be here and so what we can do is we can start at the top and count down well assuming the top zero then we count one two three to get to the value that we're actually looking at and that's what the offset is. Okay. If we had a system that has um, that we want to use more tags. Now notice here, 
we're taking block 0 from main memory and it's going into cache block 0. And if we had a cache that only had two blocks, that would mean block 1 would go to this block here. Then when we need block 2, that would go back up to this, the, the cache block at the top here, and then block 3 from memory would go into the bottom block. And notice what's happened, the way they've handled it here is to set the tag as 1. So when the value was coming from this first block, the tag was 0, but when it came from the second block that was mapped to cache block 0, they indicated it with a 1. And again, then we have the 1, 0 indicating, okay, that's number 2, so 0, 1, 2. So getting the data from there. Okay, so now how you set this up can vary greatly. This is an example that has 14 bits. Right, and the tag is 7 bits, so you could have more sort of permutations in a way, or that could be more flexible and more useful, perhaps. And then we're saying the block is 4 bits, and the offset is 3. So, oh, I guess it doesn't have a, a picture of that. No, okay. So, anyway, so you would be able to set up your systems to handle whatever word size you want, and whatever address size you need, and how many blocks you need. So it all depends on what your system is, how you would um, divide up the bits in this whole address to um, be able to handle the offset and the block that you're dealing with, and then other information about a tag, which could be like in the example before, it's sort of like which, which um, repetition of the block is going to be put into cache. Okay, so this is called direct mapped cache. And it just, there is no flexibility. You have a block in memory, it maps to a specific block in cache, and you just keep taking blocks in and out of cache as are needed. Um, and there's another kind of mapping that is called fully associative map. And in fully associative mapping, um, instead of having a block map a block of memory mapped to just one specific block of can cache what you can do is you can take a memory block and map it to the next box block in cache so it, it's not specifically mapped to a specific block in cache but rather you can um, in essence kind of move the blocks around in cache and use them in the order they are needed for storage of data. And what this does is it allows you to um, move things in and out of cache faster. Um, for example, uh, let's see if I can do this here. So let's say, hmm, I can pen out. Let's say we're using this block a lot. So that goes into one. And then we bring in this block and it goes in here, but we don't need it very long. And so we want to use this third block. If we were using direct mapped, we'd have to get rid of this first block in cache to make room for that because that's the block that the, this block two in memory map, maps to block one in cache. Well, block zero in cache, right? But if we have fully associative cache, we, and we know that we're, or the program that determines, the processor determines that we want to keep this block in there, well, instead I can evict the block one here and move this block into the next cache block. And then if I'm done using that, then I want to use, move the next one in and so on. So it allows me to keep a block in cache longer, perhaps, and to be able to n not evict. I never had to evict this block one. I didn't want to because I use that a lot right, for whatever program I'm writing. So that cache block would stay sort of permanent for the purposes of that program, whereas other blocks could be going in and out of the cache. Right? So that's fully associative cache. Okay, and the um, because we are not having to keep track of the block, because we're, it's not a specific block and that mathematical relationship between the memory block and the cache block, we have more bits left for a tag and then we have the offset. All right, so this having the tag have more bits allows us more flexibility in how we handle that memory. Um, when we evict a block, it's called a victim block, and we'll talk about different ways of choosing which block gets evicted. Um, 
in set associative cache, what we have is here, we're just grouping blocks together instead of just having one, one block be by itself, we can indicate a set. And so it may be that if we have two blocks in memory that we're wanting to bring in together, we could put them together in one set in cache. And we just, this is side by side and this is up and down. Here we have the sets. Um, the idea behind this is just that um, we're able to deal with larger um, hmm, a larger amount of data and be able to uh, get to it perhaps faster because we can say oh we need to go to set five and then block whatever the first block or the second block which could save time because we're we're narrowing down which blocks we're looking at rather than having to cycle through all of them we can just cycle through set numbers okay okay so that's set associative mapping Okay, so that's sort of an introduction to cache. Um, I recommend that you read through this in the book. There is a section about, you know, if you were given this many blocks and the word size of that, you know, and do the math to figure out what the offset would be or what the different um, components of the address would be. And you're welcome to look through those. Um, if you take a later course in uh, computer engineering, you will definitely get into a lot of that um, for the purposes of this course, I'm just wanting to make sure you sort of understand how cache works and what the purpose of it is and that be aware that there are different systems for managing that cache memory and its relationship to the RAM.